Good morning. It's a very pleasure for me to be here with you. Now, when we talk about the hypertension, I think as a, our previous speaker have been shown that it is a cornerstone of the phenotype of any heart failure, whatever preserved or non-preserved ejection fraction. So the question will be is, sorry. what is hypertension? Everybody is speaking about what hypertension, but the question is, what is hypertension? Is it a number? We are looking for number. Let us to look to the guideline. In the, if we go from Joint National Committee up till now, they have changed the number hundreds of times. And this is why, because we don't know exactly what is the pressure, what is the blood pressure number. And if you see the American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology, 2017, they give us number. And then the European, after that one year back, give different number. But all of them put it in the context of the risk. So we'll find that they are at the same. And if you look to this paper, which is published uh, 2018, they found that we have two different numbers for the blood pressure in the heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And this is something was a little bit strange because we find that the higher is better than the lower in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So this is to give us the consensus that we don't know exactly what is the number and what which number for which patient. Now, the answer is, it is number? No, it is not number. Now, the second question, is it a disease? Is there is any disease called hypertension? Let us to look to this. What is disease? Symptoms. In hypertension, there is no symptoms. It is a silent killer. Etiology? There is no etiology. We don't know exactly what is the etiology of the primary uh, hypertension. No clear etiology for primary hypertension. The second thing, lesion. What is resulting from hypertension? Nothing. It is target organ damage. There is no specific lesion for the hypertension. All it is target organ damage. Some people will have the kidney, some people have the brain, some people have the heart. So it is not dysfunction resulting from the lesion. So we don't know exactly. It is not fitting with the criteria of a disease. So what is exactly hypertension? So disease, it is not a disease. It is risk factor. The answer is yes. Why? If you put hypertension in any disease, if somebody with ischemia, somebody with obesity, somebody with uh, uh, renal failure, put the hypertension on top, it is like the joker. It will make the situation much more worse. So actually, it is a risk factor. So now to understand, it is wrong to consider hypertension as an isolated disease. This is not true. The true is, it is only a marker of the bigger problem. And hypertension is a symptomatic multi-organ system disease. It is having, can cause hypertension, heart failure, diabetes, dyslipidemia, obesity. This paper is 1991 by Dr. Eugene Brunwald and Dr. Daz. It has been shown that if you are normotensive, you are okay. Once you became hypertensive, now you start your journey for heart failure, whatever preserved or failure was, was reduced. So heart failure, as we said, we have two types, systolic and diastolic. Today, my talk will be mainly on the diastolic, which is we are talking about the phenotype of preserved uh, left ventricular uh, heart, fa uh, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. The arterial hypertension, it can cause for us either preserved or reduced ejection fraction. So, what happened in hypertension? Fairest degree of hypertension, left ventricular diastolic function, but no left ventricular hypertension. This is the fairest degree. But now, if we look to the uh, uh, American Heart Association definition of heart failure, with something called pre-stage. We are called stage A, B, C, D. A, someone is not in heart failure, but he's prone to be heart failure. And this is the stage of hypertension, the first degree. Then after that, second degree, left diastolic dysfunction with left ventricular hypertrophy. But still, systolic is there. By the way, the energy needed, the energy needed for diastolic function is 300 times more than the energy needed by the heart for systolic function. And this is why in, area, in early ischemia, the historic dysfunction comes first and then 
systolic dysfunction. Then after that, degree three, the clinical heart failure, and then finally degree four, which is the dilated heart. Now, you have to look to the heart. Our heart is a spiral organ, and this is very important to understand. What does it mean? When we look to the ejection fraction, we are looking to the heart from only one aspect. But uh, the ventricle is contracting in this way. We have short axis contraction, longitudinal contraction, and the spiral contraction. And this is, you cannot detect it only by the ejection fraction. Ejection fraction will not tell you anything about the spiral. And this is very important. Why? Because the, uh, the summation of all of this will give the contraction of the heart. And the heart failure play a major role in this. Sorry, hypertension play a major role in this. By the way, this is not new. This is since 17th century. I mean, we know that the heart is spiral. It's not uh, simple. So, if you look to the phenotype of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, we'll find two important points, the systolic dysfunction and the longitudinal systolic dysfunction. The only things cause this is heart failure, is hypertension. Now, the heart also, you have to understand, the heart is not a right ventricle and left ventricle. The heart is one muscle band. And you have to understand the importance of this. What does it mean? If you take the great vessel out of the heart and we open the heart muscle, we'll find that it is one single band, which means anything, anything affect the left side will affect the right side. This is very important because all of us have been learned before that we have right ventricle, left ventricle, and they are two separate organs, which is not true. If you don't believe me, look to this. This is the anatomy. The previous picture was cartoon. Now this is the anatomy. If we open the heart, it is one single muscle band. So this is to tell you what is the dangers of the hypertension because it affects both. So now we said it is not a number. It is not a disease. It is a risk factor. If you put it on top of anything, it will lead to the final picture. So this paper published in... Uh, uh, 2023, yes. and it's telling that current perspective on systemic hypertension in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. The traditional model of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction pathophysiology emphasizes the rule of systemic hypertension. You cannot talk about heart failure with preserved ejection fraction without mentioning the heart failure. Also, this is applied to with redu reduced ejection fraction. So, the phenotype in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, we have a lot. Atrial fibrillation, anemia, chronic disease, uh, virality, coronary disease, but in the middle, you will find hypertension. Hypertension is a cornerstone of the phenotype of preserved ejection fraction. And now we have the aging, because we know that normal heart, and once you became an aging person, it is now you are became automatically hypertension with preserved ejection fraction. So this is the definition. I will not go through it. It's everybody know heart failure reduced, medium, and preserved. And this is the new guideline published just two weeks ago by the American College of Cardiology about expert consensus decision pathway on the management of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And they put like this, hypertension, diabetes, obesity. And this is, you, they found there is, a six, uh, there is a change in the sex. Male and female, they are not equal in this story. So in female, we know that there is a preeclampsia, dysfunction, more dyspnea, and the female, and all of us in our clinical practice will find that most of our ladies who have normal systolic function, but all of them obese, coming complaining of shortness of breath in the presence of hypertension. And this is the typical phenotype of preserved ejection fraction. So in this, we have to say that hypertension is part of the phenotype and it is consistent. The question would be the comorbidity will find, with high, will find that hypertension is there. Whatever but you want to add, atrial fibrillation, sleep apnea, obesity, but it is cornerstone is high blood pressure. Now for the antihypertensive uh, medication, 
we found that arterial hypertension we have preserved and reduced. For the mechanism of blood pressure is very complex mechanism. It is heart rate, stroke volume, arterial pressure, venous pressure, cardiac output, total pressure resistance. So there is no one single treatment for hypertension. And this is since long time, we know that you have to use multiple medication. No single pill will give you the result when you are treating hypertension. So we found that this is paper published uh, 2021 about the sacubitril valzartan treatment for apparent resistant hypertension in patient with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction. And there was editorial comment about that, saying that it had been a cornerstone in the management because it is very well uh, tolerated and also it is uh, lead to symptom relief. Also, it is published in the American College of Cardiology, the same. So, sacrobotrival zartan now became one of the treatment for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction in the presence of hypertension. And we know now that if you have hypertension alone without heart failure, now we are switched switch to uh, Zartan, and if you want to use beta blocker, it is advisable in the presence of uh, heart failure was preserved to have the beta blocker with a vasodilator effect. Because now we know that not all the beta blocker are having the vasodilator effect, but in case of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, it was advisable that use the beta blocker with the uh, vasodilator effect because of the presence of hypertrophy and S uh, SLG2 and SLGP1 have been added to the treatment. So to finalize my talk, SHG2 is a coronary stone now, improved the systolic uh, function and immediately will improve the symptoms and also GLP1 have the same. So fine, this is my final slide. Time in target range for systolic blood pressure and the cardiovascular outcome in patient with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction Hypertension is one of the most common comorbidity in patient with heart failure with ejection fraction. It is one of, it is, there is no phenotype without hypertension. And most medication recommended by guideline to improve progression in uh, prognosis in this population have an effect on reducing uh, blood pressure. So this is my last slide. Working hard, but you have to use the right tool. Thank you very much.